Welcome back to the News at 10. Let's take a look at some business news now. Here's Anne Waudu. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thanks a lot, Ijoma. Welcome to Business News. We begin tonight with Nigeria's headline inflation rate for the month of January. It's expected to rise further to 12.05% from the current level of 11.98%. That's according to a survey by research and advisory firm, Financial Derivatives Company. This will be the fifth consecutive monthly increase in the year-on-year -year inflation rate. However, the survey indicates that the rate of increase is slowing from 0.3% in October last year to 0.07% in January this year, mainly due to the reduction in the base year effects and a squeeze in general purchasing power. FGC also expects that the country's food and core inflation rates will increase to 14.7% and 9.4% each. The central bank has engaged six dairy companies operating in the country for the importation of the products. In a statement released today, the financial regulator listed the companies as Friesland Campina, Wamco Nigeria, Chi Limited, TG Arla Dairy Products, Promacido Nigeria, Nestle Nigeria and Integrator Dairies Limited. CBN spokesman Isaac Okorafo explains that the regulator engaged the six companies after they showed sufficient willingness and ability and keyed into the CBN's backward integration program in order to enhance their capacity and improve local milk production. According to him, the CBN seeks to increase milk production in Nigeria from the current figure of 500,000 metric tons to about 550,000 metric tons within the next 12 months. The Lacassara Company Limited has added new flavors to its range of carbonated soft drinks. The variants come in ginger, orange, bitter lemon and tropical. The managing director, Chinedu Okereke, says that this is in response to the yearnings of its dealers who have communicated the desire of consumers for more excitement in its products. Unleash your bold is the new slang at the Lacassara Company Limited as they promise to further excite their consumers and dealers with a bold series, which come in orange, bitter lemon, tropical and ginger. The 19-year-old company boasts that once again it is charting a new course in the carbonated soft drinks industry with these flavors. The ginger brand is the first, the Nigerian number one, first ginger carbonated soft drink product in Nigeria. That is in line with Lacassera innovation philosophy, dare to be different. The company is confident that the new addition to the brand is already a success because it is birthed from the requests of the market and their dealers. Going to the market, to the six geographical regions of this country, start east, south, south, north east, north central, north west, south west. I've got your feedback and you have spoken to us of the need as a company to bring a little more excitement into our brands. To see the faces, the smiles. Former Super Eagles player Kanu can Anko is one of those who seem to have bought into the new wave of the Lacassera company. Like many other products of Lacassera company, Bodhi is soon to join those other famous brands for their refreshment. Good quality, good taste. Good price as enjoyed by consumers. And for those who would represent the company all across the country, the Lacassera company says well done for the job done so far by awarding 978 dealers from 36 states of the federation with sums ranging from 100,000 naira to 4.8 million naira. B O L D. And it's cheers to the new babies on board with the expectation yes, of more so exciting and rewarding days ahead.
Well, after Monday's sharp drop, the NSE's main index regained some balance at the close of trades today following renewed interest in high-valued stocks. As total turnover of shares rose by 38.03%. Layo Adegoke has the details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Markets Report. Less than 24 hours after its sharp drop, the equities market staged a moderate 0.36% rebound at the close of Tuesday's session after investors keyed in on the low price of some high-value stocks. Significant increase in the share price of MTN Nigeria, Lafarge, Zenit Bank, as well as UACN contributed to the 52 billion naira recovered from Monday's 154 billion naira loss. Now, this comes despite the negative performance recorded from across all major counters of the market, except the oil and gas, which gained 0.05%. Total volume of shares traded today is higher by more than 76 million units compared to the last trading session. And this was largely driven by Tier 1 lenders, UBA, GT Bank, and also Zenit Bank. Meanwhile, here are the top three gainers and the losers for the day. Well, that's it on the Stock Market Reports. I'm Layo Adegoki. Thank you, Laya. Despite some of the world's leading stock market regained some grounds today, investors are still monitoring the spread of the coronavirus and its effect on the global economy. Let's take a look at the closing figures for today. With those numbers, we'll end business news for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I am Anne Mwawadu. It's back to you, Ijoma. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thanks a lot, Anne. As part of its corporate social responsibility, Fidelity Bank, in partnership with Gabriel Academy, has organized a youth empowerment program for undergraduates at the Sokoto State University. According to the bank's acting regional manager, Salihu Jibrin, 200 students are expected to be trained in various skills in the seventh edition of the program that started four years ago. On its part, the Sokoto State government says it will not only sustain the gesture, but also expand it to accommodate more youths. Fidelity Bank PLC, in partnership with Gazelle Academy, has organized a youth empowerment program for undergraduates in Sokoto State University. 200 students of the State University, selected from various departments and faculties, are expected to participate in the training and empowerment program. According to the organizers, it's aimed at empowering the students financially while they're still at school. This is own, uh, Fidelity Bank's own little way in saying that, um, let's hold your hand and grow with you so that we can weather the storm together. The idea is to create young men and women who will become the entrepreneurs of notes. Even while you're in school, Fidelity Bank, as an organization, as part of its corporate social responsibility and sustainability, decided to create this very unique program where we'll go to higher institutions across the country to give you specific technical skills. It was conceived four years ago, and the Sokoto State Edition is the seventh stream of the program. This project is the first of its kind, and we want to say thank you to Fidelity Bank and the Gazelle Academy for honoring us with this program. I can say, I can say that indeed Fidelity Bank keep it worse. At the end of the training, participants are expected to get starter packs in line with their chosen vocations to enable them kickstart their business. 
The main thing that we try to achieve is to get the youth to understand that they can and that they are possible to improve their confidence in themselves to be able to earn money while in school. So what the skill training is doing for them is to show them their capacity, what they can do even as undergraduates, to believe that as an undergraduate they can actually start something and start earning money from it. It's a very unique initiative, something that when used properly will be reaching a milestone and I am very honored to be part of it. Wow, I'm very grateful that I'm one of them and then thank you Fidelity Bank, thanks for all the courage and I'm grateful that now a little bit shy but I'm courageous now. Thanks so very much. It's expected that this partnership with Fidelity Bank PLC will go a long way towards giving hope to the youth of the state and the nation. The federal government says it's determined to create the right kind of environment in terms of policies and guidelines that encourage massive investment in the country's gas space. The group managing director of the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, Mile Kiari, made this declaration at the ongoing petroleum summit in Abuja. He explained that energy transition will not necessarily be quick to shift to renewables, considering the huge number of homes in Nigeria that require fossil fuel. Our energy correspondent, Olu Phillips, reports. Anyone and everyone who has a thing to do or is associated with the oil and gas sector within the country and globally endeavors to make a representation here at the Nigeria International Petroleum Summit. So, operators, experts, regulators, bankers, insurance, lawyers, and many more converge to discuss the industry and take positions. Nigeria has declared this year as the year of gas, and it is in direct response to the global energy transition into renewables. But explaining how we will travel, the GMD and MPC makes these remarks. What we do need today is to transit into getting power to our homes, to our industries, to take advantage of the enormous gas resources that we have here. Utilize petroleum into pet chem, into fertilizer, into power, and if you have excess, export it. Looking in words at a huge potential that has been somewhat neglected, Nigeria has signaled to the world it will massively develop its gas, consume more of its clean exploration for domestic economic growth and prosperity. 55% of the engineering work on Train 7 will be done in Nigeria. 55% of the procurement that we need for Train 7 will be handled by Nigerian vendors. 100% of all the installation and construction work will happen here in Nigeria. If we can execute even the seven critical gas projects in the country, that's a material shift in the whole gas story in Nigeria. The leadership of the Gas Association couldn't be more excited. When we're talking about consuming gas, largely we're looking at issues around power. We're looking at gas-based industrializations, the petrochemicals, the methanols, the ammonia plants, and, and then, of course, all the other types of industry. And this is usually clean burning. As the plenary continues, certain points resonate. We will create the right physicals for investment. We will industrialize. We will ensure energy security. We will earn forex for more export. And more businesses will emerge for Nigerians and in Nigeria. The world is invited to switch on on this. Olu Phillips, Channel Television News. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Shibaju, says the late Kenyan leader, Daniel Arap Moy, will be remembered for the pioneering work done with respect to regional cooperation in Africa. The Vice President was one of the dignitaries that attended the funeral of the late leader in Nairobi, Kenya, where he gave an address. Professor Shibajo extolled Mr. Moy's involvement in the resuscitation of the East African community, along with Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni and others. The common market for Eastern and Southern Africa, as well as the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, were just some of the things that he extolled as well. The precursors, he said, of the African continent free trade agreement was also mentioned. He thanked God for the late leader's life, which he said was spent in service of the Kenyan people and prayed that God comfort the, co the government and the people of Kenya. Still ahead on the news at 10, World Health Organization officially renames new coronavirus as COVID-19 as death toll from the disease rises to over 1,000. And we'll have more from our London studios and around the world in five. 
Plus, Barcelona confirmed France international Usman Dembele will be sidelined for six months following surgery. That's all coming up. Do join us again.